Hey everyone, Mr. Schachter here with Continuity Part 3, the final exciting part. Uh, this time we're going to explore the Intermediate Value Theorem and its implications. This is a huge theorem. Very exciting. Let's see what it says. The Intermediate Value Theorem for a continuous function says, uh, a function y equals f of x that's continuous on a closed interval. Okay, so to even use this theorem, we have to be a continuous function on the closed interval a to b. Uh, it takes on every value f of a uh, between f of a and f of b. Okay, so basically if this is f of a and this is f of b, and we know this thing is continuous on the closed interval a to b, every y value, every y value between f of a and f of b will eventually be hit. So like for example, if this was 3 and this was 5, um, everything, 3.1, 3.3, 3.9, 4.2, 4.5, um, will all be hit on the way to reaching 5. Which makes sense, because this thing's continuous, meaning it goes straight up, doesn't skip any values or skip any numbers. Let's try an example. Um, this particular example says, if f of x equals x squared minus 4, does a 0 exist on the interval 0 to 3? In order to verify this, you first need to examine, is this a continuous function on the closed interval 0 to 3? So it looks like it is, right? This thing is x squared minus 4. It's just a parabola moved down four spaces. This is a continuous function on 0 to 3. So we can use the, uh, we can use the intermediate value theorem. In order to use the intermediate value theorem, we first have to examine what is the function value at 0 and what is the function value at 3. And if you plug a 0 into the original function, out comes negative 4. And if you plug a 3 into the original function, you get 3 squared, which is 9, and 9 minus 4 is 5. So the question is, if we know the y values start at negative 4 and they go to 5, will they pass 0 on the way? Because that's what a 0 is. A 0 is when f of x equals 0, right? Is when the y value equals 0. Well, the answer is yes. The answer is yes, the intermediate value theorem uh, guarantees the existence of a zero. So the response is a bit lengthy. You have to structure it by introducing the theorem itself. So this is what we're going to say. Since, whoops, since uh, f of x equals x squared minus 4 is continuous on the closed interval 0 to 3, the intermediate value theorem, which is okay to abbreviate, the intermediate value theorem um, applies. Okay? Um, and then since we're, we're going to say um, because because uh, f of 0 is negative 4 and f of 3 is 5, the intermediate value theorem proves that f of x will equal 0 at some point on the closed interval 0 to 3. Okay? Let's try another example. This one says, show that f of x has a solution. Again, when we say show that f of x has a solution, what that's entailing is we need to basically have f of x equaling 0. This does not give, this does not give any bounds this time. No closed interval, but that's okay. Would you like to know why? Because f of x equals x cubed plus x minus 6 is continuous for all values of x, so we don't have to worry. So in order to first uh, figure this out, we basically need to pick some numbers, okay? So the first value I'm going to pick is f of 0. Why? Because I really like plugging 0 into functions. It's easy to solve numerically. If I plug a 0 in for x, I get negative 6 as an answer. So this is my goal. Pick some new x value such that I result in a positive answer because the change from negative to positive guarantees the existence of a zero. It's notable to add that if I perhaps picked a positive number first, I'd want to try to show a change of a negative value. Okay, So let's see if we can do this. So if I know that f of zero is negative six, I don't know, let's try ten. And if I use a handy calculator to help me out here, if I plug 10 into x, it's going to tell me the answer is 1004, which is exactly what I wanted. So let's structure the answer appropriately. Since f of x 
equals x cubed plus x minus 6 is continuous on its entire domain. Okay, uh, and f of 0 equals negative 6. Um, well, actually, you know what we'll say? We'll say, no, this is good. We can keep working with this. And f of 0 is negative 6, or no. So we'll say, and, and, um, uh, f of x changes from negative to positive um, from 0 to 10. Uh, f of x must have a solution on 0 to 10. And I didn't have to say um, it has to have a solution on 0 to 10, but that's where the solution that I found is. That's my window. Of course, if it has a solution in 0 to 10, then it has a solution in general. Okay? Let's try one more. Uh, this one is uh, worded a bit differently. It says, is any real value exactly 1 less than its cubed? Well, really what I'm asking you is, is any value x, okay? Is any value x, is that ever equal to 1 less than its cubed? So is this true? Is this, ever a, is this ever a process? Is this a thing? In order to ask if that's true, really what I'm asking you to do is find out if there's any solutions to the function x cubed minus x minus 1. And this, this function is basically a result of taking the function above and subtracting x from both sides. And then, of course, I really want to know, is this ever 0? So this is the question. Is x cubed minus x minus 1 ever 0? Well, I think you can see where we're going with this. Uh, is it continuous? Yes, it is. So let's see if we could find some values. Um, this time I'm going to check uh, 0 again, and it's going to be negative 1. And I'm going to check 5, and if I plug a 5 in here, I get 119. So this is enough evidence to say a solution exists. It's somewhere between 0 and 5, um, but we're really just verifying the existence of a solution. So once again, we say, since f of x is, uh, and we'll write the function, f of x equals, since f of x equals x cubed minus x minus 1 is continuous, um, is continuous for all values of x, and um, since um, the function values, f of x values, change from negative 1 to, or actually, you know what, let's not get that specific. Let's just say change from negative to positive on 0 to 5. Um, a solution must exist on 0 to 5 proving that there is a number that is one less than its cube. And for fun, go find it. Go find that number. Plug that new graphing calculator and get the solution and see what number is actually exactly one less than its cube.